Bipolar disorder is a disorder where you have these wild rushes of mania and these big chunks of depression that follow afterwards. So one moment your mind is racing and you're going 100 miles per hour and you feel like you're brilliant or you're touched by God or you can solve all these equations. Another moment you're very sad and you're crying and you're depressed and you don't want to get out of bed and your mood vacillates between the two extremes. My son's first sign that he had a mental illness was when he was in college, which is when these often emerge. I was acting very erratically. I was going days without sleep. Um, I was had these puzzles in my mind that I was trying to decode, and everything was sort of like a mystery to me, and I was trying to put these seemingly random things into some sort of order or context. I get this call from his oldest brother and he says, uh, Kevin is crazy. And I drive to New York and I get him and during, he'd been wandering around for several days, he hadn't slept. He was convinced God had him on this special mission. And during that frantic four hour ride from New York to Fairfax County, Virginia, he would laugh one minute and begin crying the next and just in terrible pain. And uh, I said, take your medication, take your pills. And he screamed, pills are poison, leave me alone. And we got to the emergency room and um, the nurse rolled her eyes, talking about, because he's listening about this gibberish. And then we were taken to a room for four hours. And he said, nothing's wrong, I'm gonna leave. And I literally had to grab a doctor and pull him in there. And the doctor said, I'm sorry, you know, I can't help your son. Because at that time, the law said someone had to be in imminent danger. And, We'd been sitting there four hours, so there's no danger. So he said, bring him back after he tries to hurt you or hurt someone else. And I took him home, I watched him 48 hours. He had tin foil wrapped around his head. He was watching TV, he thought the CIA was reading his thoughts. And then he slipped out of the house. He slipped out, he broke into a stranger's house. Luckily, no one was there. Broke in to take a bubble bath. Took five police officers to get him out. And even then, uh, they took him to a mental health center and I went racing over there and the policeman outside said, wait, wait, wait said, before you go in there, unless you tell them that your son's threatened to kill you, he will end up in jail. I was in denial about having mental illness for a good five years before I finally came to terms with the fact that I actually had mental illness. Eight years ago, that's when um, we had just found out that I was, that we were having a baby. So I was maybe two months pregnant and we weren't planning on saying anything. But then we found out that Kevin was off his meds and we were talking to him and hearing how he sounded and just like worried about him. So um, we weren't planning on telling anyone then, but we told him that we wanted to tell him and it was really important because we were so excited for him to be an uncle, but we wanted him to be. Well, we just told him we wanted him to be around for Mirabella. And like by that time, I think we were knowing he already had the bipolar diagnosis you know, reading more about it and reading more other, about other people's stories and the things that they've gone through and just like, gosh, I hope that doesn't happen to Kevin. In 2012, I was approached by Jennifer Marshall and uh, she's somebody who I was in support groups with and she had this idea to put together a show called This Is My Brave. And it was a show where people speak through writing and poetry and music, how they can express their ordeals or their triumphs with mental illness. And I created an original rap song for her, for her show. And in 2014, I performed in front of a crowd 
of 300 people and I got a standing ovation and it was a very inspiring point in my recovery. Kevin Early is a This Is My Brave board member. I met him several years ago at a bipolar support group. I had read his father's book, Crazy, A Father's Journey Through America's Mental Health Madness, but didn't realize for some time that Kevin was actually the subject of the book. I'm a fan, both of his dedication to giving back and his rapping talents. He has independently released 12 albums over the last eight years, working with underground hip hop legends such as The Witch Doctor and Micah Nine. As a peer-to-peer -peer specialist, he helps the mentally ill in Fairfax County. He works with police departments to help them better understand how to interact with people with mental illnesses. Kevin will perform his original rap song, Brave. The first time that I made a song about mental illness, it was a song I made called Mental Hospital. And after I had made it, it was like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders to be able to speak uh, my experience into the world and get it out there. This is my testimony. This is my brave. This is the receipt for everything that I gave. This is when I was committed, I couldn't behave. This is how I recovered, this is how I was saved. Mental illness has kind of been a mixed blessing in some ways because it's given me a purpose in my life. Before I had mental illness, I didn't know what I wanted to do professionally. Um, I didn't have as much to talk about in my music. Could be anyone in your family tree when you see your brother, your uncle, you see me. I couldn't be who I am today without community housing and opportunity. It's all part of recovery. One in four adults deal with some sort of form of mental illness in their lifetime. It's the new norm. Now that I've overcome it, I can look back at it. And even though there were very tragic incidences and there were things that happened that I probably wish never had happened. It's made me who I am today and it's made me stronger. And I'm grateful for the experience because it's given me a purpose and a professional duty and I plan on going to school to study social work and becoming a uh, social worker in the future. Got a price to pay. This is my redemption song. I can't blame society. This is my testimony. This is my brave. This is the receipt for everything that I gave. This is when I was committed. I'm the writer of the book Crazy, A Father Searched Through America's Mental Health Madness. And it combines my son's story, which I wanted to tell, uh, with my research as a journalist that I did in Miami-Dade, where I spent 10 months following people in the jail through our criminal justice system. And what I hope people get out of the book is that mental illness is my face. It's my son's face. These people with mental illness shouldn't be blamed. There should be no shame in having a mental illness. There should only be shame in not helping them. Yes, on the news, you might get it misconstrued. Only a few turn into shooters. Condolences to the families. I don't know what you're going through, but my heart goes out to you because they know not what they do. We need to talk about it from a unique point of view as a society. These issues seem to divide us in two. How would you feel if these are the cards that were dealt? It's easier to get a gun than proper mental health. Stigma everywhere. Every Everybody out for self situations feeling like you can't find a way out. My goals as a social worker are just to help people who are in need. There are people out there who are suffering and struggling like I was suffering and struggling and I just want to make their lives easier. I want them to come to terms with their mental illness in a smooth transition and not have to go through the battles that I've been through. I don't want them to get tasered by police, don't want them to get arrested. So my goal is to make their lives better and help out the community and help out other people. I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy.